Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Uh, a few weeks ago we posted a video about putting a veneer top onto a strap body and it was wildly popular. So I thought we'd do another one. In fact, I had already planned on doing this one because I'm going to be using some different techniques. So today we're going to continue on with the whole veneering thing. Um, we're going to be using a lot thinner veneer and a lot more figured veneer. And we're going to be using a different uh, combination of tools. We're not going to be using clamps anymore. We're going to be using a vacuum bag. So stick around and uh, let's get to it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to start with this basswood body. And as you can see, I have already drawn the outline of a strap onto here. I even put some pickups onto this one, but I think this veneer is going to be so cool that we're not going to need them. Um, and I have also laid out where our contour is going to go. And um, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to fire up the uh, belt sander and we're going to put that on there. I'll show you that. But before we do, I want to show you the veneer that we're going to be using today. And it's this stuff here. This is, um, this is a pretty crazy piece of quilt maple. And um, veneer is a neat thing. It's, it's almost like cheating because you get... Um, you get the real nice figure, but it's not a very thick piece. As a matter of fact, this veneer and most veneers, this is like, I don't know, 20 thousandths? Maybe a little more than that? It's not even registering on my, uh, on my calipers. It's just barely registering. Just a little teeny tiny bit. If brain surgery Kevin was here, he could tell me exactly how thick it was because he carries uh, a micrometer around with him and I'm always teasing him about how I'm going to use it as a C-clamp one day. So a veneer like this is really cool and it's really fun stuff. It's thin, you know, so you have to, you have to apply it properly, but um, you know, a, a giant thick piece of that kind of quilt maple would be considerably more. That stuff came from our buddies at Chicago Veneer and um, I think I paid like $18 for two sheets of this stuff and it's wildly wildly cool and it's gonna get a lot cooler when we put it on a guitar body um, So I've got I'm gonna have a lot of links to places where we got stuff because I want you guys to know where I get all this stuff and Because it never fails I always have like people ask me where to get some of the you know components that I use and I have to go back and look it up so all the links to all the descriptions of all the places from for tools that we got um, are going to be in the description below so make sure to look down there. I also want to send a shout out to my new friend Terry at the uh, Loveland Woodcraft who uh, uh, recognized me today I guess because I am sort of look like a caricature and I'm easy to spot in woodworking places where guys don't generally look like me. Um, but um, he hooked me up with some of this uh, this stuff here, Unibond 1. He hook, I paid for it, but um, he and I were talking about doing veneers, and uh, I'm going to read the directions on this. But before I do any of that lame stuff, like read directions, I'm going to fire up my belt sander, and we're going to put a um, comfort contour on the front of that strap body. All right, so there you can see my contour that I uh, that I started. I'm going to uh, smooth this out with a little bit of hand sanding. Uh, it feels pretty good right now, but um, I just want to just want to get rid of a little bit of this crisp line here. And sometimes it's easier to do that by hand. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, so everything is nice and, uh, and this transition is nice and smooth here. I mean, obviously there's a little bit of a place where it falls off, but I think that's going to be cool. Um, you might remember, so I, I cut this body out already, mostly so that I could put the contour on. It would be easier than having a giant square and do that. I left about a quarter of an inch or so of material all the way around, which will be good because when we go ahead and put this in the... Um, the vacuum bag, it's going to, you know, suck down and uh, I want to have a little bit left over so I can trim it out, you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, I'll show you guys all of that stuff. So the next thing we need to do is we need to read the instructions on our glue and, um, oh, we should probably uh, trace out our veneer and see what that's going to look like. So I picked up the side that I like the best and I'm just going to lay my body blank on it and... Uh, yeah, I think that will be cool. And there's a couple of weird, not really knots, but pieces of 
figure that I'm not red hot on. And uh, so, okay, I think I like it like there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace around the body, which remember, the body is oversized. And it's so nice, I traced around it twice. Um, yeah, that'll be cool. It's going to look neat. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut out around this line here using a razor blade. And you kind of have to be careful because veneer doesn't exactly trim like, uh, you know, like, like paper does. But it's pretty close. So remember, this stuff is super, super thin. And uh, you want to have a little bit more. In fact, I'm even cutting a little bit more around this uh, where the comfort contour is going to go because I've added some length to that. You know what I'm saying? But everywhere else, I'm just going to basically cut on the line because um, my piece is oversized. Let's see. Yeah. See? So. Oh, crap. <laughs> I just ripped it. I think that's okay, but it's something to, uh, you know, to watch for when you're doing this to make sure that you don't do what I just did. Um, that'll all glue down just fine. In fact, we're going we're gonna to tape it back together on the top so that it does glue down just fine. So I got my veneer cut out, and as you can see, it bends very easily over uh, all the places I need it to bend. And um, I put some blue masking tape on the cracks that I had in my veneer, and um, because I want those to stay put together when I glue this down, you know what I'm saying? So um, it will probably look great once it's all said and done, but I want it to hold together so I don't have a weird, a weird crack. All right, so that looks pretty decent. This masking tape here came from the, the, the veneer place. It's about the same color as my basswood, and I'm like, oh crap, I cut it out too short. But actually, it's just this, um, it's just this piece of masking tape here. So, uh, that looks pretty good. And, um, yeah. So now let's get out the vacuum rig and show you what that looks like. So here's my vacuum bag and this came from veneersupplies.com and they are cool people and they will help you with lots and lots of stuff. So what we are going to do is we're going to test this out first. Hey, one thing I forgot to tell you all about is this breather mesh stuff, which I also got from the veneer place. Apparently this makes everything even better. So um, we're going to wrap this around the piece and uh, you know, we're just going to go for it. Okay, so I've tested this a couple, three times with a few different ways. Seems like the best way to go is to just put the body in there with the veneer on top and then use the, uh, the mesh stuff. I tried it with this backer board and uh, it didn't seem to do any better. So I, uh, I got my new, uh, my new glue. You probably could just use type on. I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, so this seems like a pretty good application for the uh, weenie roller. And this glue is allegedly exactly the right stuff for doing veneers. So let's find out. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Hope it's worth the money. I mean, I guess the, really the only real way to find out is use this and a handful of other products, which I'm not going to do if this works great. You know, that's a common question that I get is, what other products can I use? I'm having trouble finding product XYZ or whatever. And you know, I, guys, as soon as I find something that works, I generally just stick with it. So I don't, I don't know. I wish I could help you out more, but I just can't. So I kind of feel like I want to have maybe more glue than I think I need on this round. Uh, though I don't know why. I just think that's what I want. Um, again, 
This is on the job training. Earn while you learn, and so on. All right. Now we just simply press this guy on here, and it seems to tack up pretty fast, so that's good. Get this backer board out of the way. Okay. So now all that's left to do is get it in the old vacuum bag here. All right, that looks pretty decent. I think we can make sure everything's lining up pretty good. Get our uh, zip top thing here. It's not really a zip top, but it's, you know, same kind of technology, only in backwards form. Yeah, I think everything looks pretty decent. Now we just pull a vacuum, I guess. Okay, so it's been a couple hours and um, we are ready to pull the, uh, the guitar body out of the, um, the, the vacuum bag. Let me show you what it looks like before we do that. So as you can see, it is still sucked down and uh, I think when we pull this, uh, this guy apart here, it's going to look really cool. So I'm going to put this camera back on the, uh, the stand because it's just me today and we'll take a look. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull the, uh, the air dealie off here. Notice I'm using the, uh, the scientific terms, terminology, air dealie, etc. So this seemed to work, uh, I mean, so far so good. I don't know how this glue works, but seems to be stuck down pretty well. Man, this bag works good. Yeah, actually that looks uh, that looks really great. There's some squeeze out through, remember I was telling you about this one little area here? I think that will sand out and be, and be just fine. Um, the place where we had some cracks, uh, we can pull the tape back, and yeah, it looks just fine. I think once this is all sanded, and especially once it's painted, this will be, uh, you won't even be able to tell that it had any cracks in there. I think on the next one that I do, I might try to leave the body as square as possible so that I don't have to, uh, so that I don't have to um, cut the veneer or I, I cut the veneer as little as possible. Okay guys, so here is our body blank with, um, with a quilt maple veneer on it. Actually it turned out pretty slick. So we went from a fairly boring basswood back, well body blank, and we went to a full-on custom quilt job. So uh, we, can, uh, we can attach a template to the back of this now and uh, you know either finish out the edge on the pin router or do it on the shaper and um, kind of want to do it now. Alright guys, uh, our veneer top super strat looking thing is, uh, is done. Now remember this was basswood on the back which is eh, pretty ugly but it's wood with a really cool quilt maple top veneer on the top and um, as you can see the, uh, the old vacuum rig, this will all get sorted out, the vacuum rig sure did a good job on uh, sucking the top down to the base structure. All this will get cleaned up on a sander. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions about what we did or uh, any of the, the tools that we used, remember I'm going to leave links to all of the, uh, the tools and the equipment that we used in the uh, description below the video. So if you have any questions about like where would you get it, it's down in the description. Um, 
But if you have any questions about what we did or if you have any comments about, uh, you know, what maybe we could do with this body because I have no idea. It'll be neat. But um, anyway, so uh, thanks for watching the video. If you haven't uh, hit the subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That helps us out. And if you like the video, give us the thumbs up. If you appreciate content like this and uh, learning a little bit about what we do here in the shop, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. For only a buck a month, it helps us out quite a bit, bringing you neat stuff like this. So, um, let's see, let's see. If you can't go to the Patreon page, we totally get it. Um, but feel free to share this video as many places as you like. That is extra super duper helpful too. So, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. Play like a target